Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, um, this is the second video I wanted to bring to you today. And it is Wednesday, March the 24th, and now it's 1024. Okay, now we're starting off with Dawn's prophecy letter. One of these is not going to get read, and one is going to get read out of order because it led to a Bible study. All right, so I'm going to start off with Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. When your heart is overwhelmed with suffering in the world, and even in your own circumstances, I am greater than your heart. Look to me for guidance and comfort. Refuse to get bogged down in hopelessness and despair. There is a hope that transcends that which is temporary and establishes eternal life. Remember, brothers and sisters, I don't know if there is a scripture that says this, but many agree when I've discussed this. When we get to heaven, and we're there for good, you know, we're not coming back to do our battling and harvesting. When we're back in heaven, we're there for good. Okay, anything bad is going to be wiped out of our memory. I, I, I don't see the Lord... Letting us have this beautiful place to live. And all this beauty around us and being with him and father and each other. And then be always rem be, be reminded that, oh, so-and-so's not here and I wish daddy were here. And you know what I'm saying? So... Does anybody really think we're going to have memories of the bad? I don't. So I just wanted to throw that in. And that's why I believe he says there is a hope that transcends that which is temporary and establishes eternal life. All our relationships down here on earth were temporary. And everybody has a choice. Okay, moving on. This is the verse put with it. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 8-10 through 10. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken or abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. I don't know what version this is. That the life of Jesus may also may be manifested in our body. We should always, this is me speaking, not the verse. We should always be putting to death the flesh. That's in the scriptures. But that means we're dying to self as Jesus died for us. Continually remember that and die to self. Something you shouldn't be doing. Maybe you're just overeating. Kill that. Eat what you need. And don't overdo it and become one of these that are like, what do you call it, bulimic? Or afraid to eat too much fat so you eat none and the body needs some fat because that's where you get omega 3s, 6s, and 9s. And you should do a study on that because one of them is not so good for you and you don't want so much of it. And I honestly can't remember which one. So I'm going to move on. We're skipping this next one. And the next one. And I'll read it last. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is dated March 24th. 
How would you like it if I didn't validate or acknowledge any form of pain you were feeling? The thought of that seems absurd. But consider how you, as a representative of me, may have been unsuccessful in recognizing the aches and hurts of other people. Be attentive. You are my eyes, my ears, and mouth, as well as my hands and feet. People yearn to receive unquestionable acceptance and understanding. Genuinely administer my tender-hearted compassion. The verse put with this is 1 Corinthians 16, 14 from the Voice Bible. Let love prevail in your life, words, and actions. That is by, uh, was given to Kevin Robinson. Now, having said that, and I can understand what Jesus would mean, that some people just don't want to hear it. They're like, well, we're not supposed to complain. Uh, complaining is a sin. I I've gotten that. Uh, I won't say from who, but someone that works here. But anyway, um, then there's the opposite. Letting a person take up all your time, continually telling you, oh, my back hurts and my feet ache. And last night I just couldn't sleep for tossing and turning because my condition kept me up and Oh, and now I've got this migraine headache, and you, and it's every day. And the the message, if it is from the Lord, and I do say if, because we take everything to the Lord for confirmation, and I can believe that this is from the Lord. He wants us to be compassionate. You don't just blow people off because you never want to hear anybody complain. Give them some compassion and some ideas for how to deal with it. Given their pain to the Lord. You might know a trick on what to do for migraines. Share it with them. Um, ask them what they try for their pain. And perhaps you can suggest they call their doctor for uh, some help with pain relief depending on where they are with Jesus. They may not be Christian. They may be barely there. They may be of a denomination that doesn't believe in healing. It's He's not telling you, lay hands on them and heal them. Now, yes, that is going to be one of our superpowers when we come back. And some people have that gift now. I've tried it. Nobody got healed. And I, I thought we all could heal. But I didn't know all the facts. I didn't think I needed to. But they didn't get healed. So I got discouraged and quit trying. Because after a while, you know, word gets around. She's laying hands on people and praying and nobody's getting healed. You know what I'm saying? Well, so what if you're praying? Maybe Jesus will relieve their pain. Do it if you feel led, okay? All right, let's move on. What good does it do to look at your situation in the natural? The natural realm is just that, natural. Your realm as a believer is to live in the supernatural. Remember, you are seated in heaven with me. I know this is hard to believe, but it is true. I will show you supernatural answers to issues. I will show you supernatural manifestations that happen only when heaven invades earth. 
both realms are active. You choose. Yes, it's true. The spiritual is very much active, more so now than ever, and the natural is very much active. Our problems are real. The supernatural is very real. So, he, he's saying, what good does it do to look at your situation in the natural? It's very hard for many humans to look at something in the supernatural. Can you see yourself seated in heavenly places with Christ? And what happens if you're one of those ones, you're part of the remnant, but you're deceived and you take the V. That's my question. I'm going to be praying about that because that is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Because you didn't have enough of the Holy Spirit in you to give you enough trust in God to keep you from getting sick or from passing it on to others or because you wanted to buy a plane ticket to go see your daughter in Ireland. Do you see? You didn't trust that God will take care of my daughter in Ireland. I don't have to go see her. It didn't even dawn on somebody I love very much. Very godly man and his wife. I was just floored when I found that out. And I think I read this and I'm like, Okay, they were OSAS. Okay, all of them are saying it's not going to affect us. We're once saved, always saved. Always. Always means always. You see? And now look. So I'm glad this was in here. I don't understand it. And I have already emailed the team. I want to discuss it with the team and get everybody's opinion on how. On, I know the answer, but I don't know how. How are, are, is our spirit sitting next to Christ and all of a sudden he shoots us back down? When we turn our backs on Christ, start going back into the world and we're not repenting, and then we die. What do you think happens? We go to hell. Because you have unforgiven sin in your heart. You're actively sinning. You're in the world. I don't see your spirit sitting next to Christ. Now do you? The verse is Ephesians 2.6. Now this is TPT Bible. I don't know what that is. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. See, I have a feeling some of these Bibles might have been translated to co to back up once saved always saved all right now ephesians 2 6 i had that pulled up but i already closed it so i'll open another one In king james
and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's after we're saved. And you can read that, read about that in Ephesians chapter 2. Or did I punch that in right? Yeah, that was 2 6. All right, now I'm going to go to the last of these and tell you what I've pulled up. What, what appears to be worry? Because this is going to affect anybody left behind. Now, some many of you, I pray and hope, are with the first fruits rapture or going outside of time. It's a rapture. You're, you're pulled out. You're rescued. But you go to Christ, and I don't know that we go. Well, according to what he told me, we... We go to be with him, but it doesn't say in heaven. So whether it's on a figurative Mount Zion, wherever, doesn't matter. We go to Jesus. Praise God, it'll be so awesome. We get our instructions, our glorified bodies on the way there, I'm sure. And we come back and we help those left behind. Okay, so this has to do with those left behind. All right. What appears to be a worry is no worry at all. Ah, let me take that back. This may apply to some people before that. It just depends on how long it's going to be before we go. Some people are at this point already because they're that poor. All right, what appears to be a worry is no worry at all. It is a ruse. I have handled it already. You have prayed and surrendered it all to me. That is, if you have, I'm adding that, if you have, but you were not really sure it could be handled correctly. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's funny. When you first prayed is when I corrected it. The result will show up soon. This is a lesson of belief for you. I always do what is best for you. Seek me first. I'll always take care of you. Matthew 6, 31 through 33 says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the unbelievers seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And this was given to Bev Robinson. Now this made me think of Elijah and when the ravens fed him. So I pulled that up. Let's go over here, go over here. And I'm going to read this to you. Now, let me check. I got to change my position every now and then. Okay, put my feet up. Now, let me just. All right. Okay. Now, Elijah predicts drought. We're in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, 
but according to my word. See, Ahab was evil. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, or Cherith, that is before Jordan. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It could be Cherith, but I'll just say Cherith. Verse 4. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Imagine that. Ravens. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, or Cherith, that is before Jordan. I'm in the King James Version. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Doesn't say what kind of flesh. Could have been birds, could have been fish. I don't know. Verse 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Does that mean the Lord's going to stop providing for us? No. Keep listening. It just means he's telling you to move on. Leave from there. You pray and listen for a still small voice. He'll tell you where to go. All right, now let me continue. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. She was given up, and yet the Lord said he commissioned her to feed him. Kind of strange, huh? I guess she didn't believe him. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. He's going to take care of all of them. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. It means it was never empty. Neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. See, the Lord speaks through us. He does to this day. Elijah raised... Oh, that's... Okay, that's the end of that. But then Elijah raises the widow's son. 
he ended up dying. Uh, his sickness was so sore, there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? She didn't have really great faith, did she? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid upon him, laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn? by slaying her son, and he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. Oh, it just hit me. I was told you this was talking about the left behind, and we're coming back to help the left behind. And this is the type of thing we're going to do. We're going to be bringing people back to life. Don't forget it. It's going to be awesome. Part of it, not so much. A good part of it. But then what we do, what we get to do, great exploits. The things Jesus said, greater things than these shall you do. It's going to be awesome. And this is an example of it. People's faith needs to be built up. And he started off by showing that, see, God's going to feed you. And he's going to give you uh, whatever you, he, in this case, it was meal and oil that they mixed together and made probably little pancake-like things. Anyway, so we're going to help get, through God's power, through us, we'll feed people. We'll bring your sick back to life. We might be reattaching limbs. I mean, it, we might be stopping a, a tsunami in its tracks. It's, it may split and go completely around the city. I mean, I don't know. I just know we're going to do great things. It's going to be wonderful. And when, just to see the people's faith just... Oh, God, I'm so sorry for not believing, you know, because they needed to see. Just like the people in Jesus' day saw his miracles and believed. He knew they needed that. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived and Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Eating wasn't enough. She had to see her son die and be brought back to life before she could truly believe that he was a man of God and that what he spoke was truth. People just can't see or understand the spiritual. That's why they're not ready. The spiritual hasn't brought them joy like it should have. But the worldly things bring them joy, happiness, a good time. Oh, I pray that we are all found worthy, each and every one of you. And if you're not, and you go through the three days of darkness, you call out the name of Jesus, and we will come to you, and you will have some light because of that. 
and you will be provided for. If you didn't make provisions and you you knew to not take the mark and you didn't and so you now you can't go buy or sell you will be provided for if you only have faith in God Almighty okay will be on earth for a while like 40 days the summer saying it won't be long but we're going to teach those who are willing how to do what we do you won't have the superpowers to survive an explosion but you will be able to help people multiply their food probably heal bring them back from the dead things like that I don't know but we're te gonna teach those left behind how to do what we do or what they can do what they need to do how to witness to those who God will show you because you're not going to want to go up to just anybody and start preaching the word it will be a time of joy yet trepidation I believe that's the word I want to use you must like treading lightly but carry a big stick be wise as serpents, but gentle as a dove, the word says. All right. I plead the blood of Jesus over this teaching, this video, and over each and every single one of us and all of our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.